David Hugh is obsessed with snakes, how they move, their skin. Speaking of skin. Sometimes when my girlfriend was taking a shower, I would put the six foot long snake in the tub with her. So we really got used to having the snakes around. I think they also got used to us. But it's not a weird obsession. David is a mathematician and a mechanical engineer, and he's just overturned a 70 year old theory about how snakes move. For decades, biologists thought snakes moved by pushing against things in their environment. Then David put a snake on the carpet. A snake could move very, very easily and very quickly. And it, it led us to begin to question the theory of the biologists, because here was an area that was more or less flat, but the snake could push easily as if we were pushing against invisible objects. He likes a challenge, and the mystery of how snakes move was something he couldn't resist. Well, I like research in animal locomotion, because um, to make any progress, you really have to imagine what it's like to be that animal. What would it be like to be an animal with scales? But for that matter, do scales actually help with motion? To make imagining all this a little easier, David and his students built virtual snakes, snakes without scales. And we found that they actually undulated in place, so they didn't go anywhere, which was very surprising to us. So we actually went back to the lab, and um, we had tried to find a snake with no scales. And all snakes happened to have scales, so what we did was uh, we invented a snake jacket. Not a jacket made out of snakes. A jacket to cover snakes' scales. So here we have the snake being put in a jacket. And this allows us to answer the question, how would snakes move if they didn't have scales? So you can still see it's trying to slither. It's trying to generate a traveling wave. But it can't get anywhere. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The real life snake acts just like the snakes in the computer. So David's discovered that scales are essential. Now watch as he tips the scales in favor of his theory. First, he anesthetizes three snakes. Usually I just give them one of my fluid mechanics lectures, but this is a little bit more fast. Then he arranges the three sleeping snakes on a wooden board. He calls this the snakes on a plane experiment. One snake head down, one snake tail down, and one snake sideways. Let's guess which snake's gonna slide first. I'm gonna slowly incline the plane. It's kind of comical, is it? This is imagine if you were asleep on a bed and someone took the bed and started sliding you off it. So notice the one that's pointing head down slides first. The one pointing tail down slides second. And the last one to slide is always the one pointed sideways. So this experiment means that snakes are most resistant to sliding in the sideways direction and least resistant to sliding in the forwards direction. The snake's belly looks like this. I've simply taken a deck of cards and I've um, arranged them so that they're all facing in one direction. If you take your hand and rub it against the belly of a snake, it feels a lot like a cat, in that if you rub it from the head to the tail, it very, slides very easily. But if you try to take your hand and rub it in the opposite direction, your hand catches. So the path of least resistance for a snake is forward. They can even control individual scales as they move along. This is actually very important for its motion. And it might be a way that snakes can change their frictional properties as they're slithering. There's more at work than scales. When you look at them from the side, you see that they can actually lift their bodies substantially when they move. This is better. He's about to shake things up with some snakes on jello. Jello is, consists of gelatin molecules, which are very long chains. And they happen to bend light in ways that are easy to measure. You can see light at pressure points where the snake pushes down. There's no glow where the snake is lifting its body. Snakes can move more efficiently by lifting parts of their body up as they slither, and that's consistent with David's computer predictions. Here's a virtual snake with its entire body on the ground. It moves slowly. Here's one that can lift its body. It moves relatively quickly. That's two breakthroughs on snake motion, scales, and the ability to lift body parts. But there's one more secret behind the slither. As David and his students have discovered, they really make waves. Here are virtual snakes in a snake race. What you see here is an array of mathematical snakes with differing amplitudes and wavelengths. The snake near the upper left that looks most snake-like moves the fastest. Depending on what kind of wave they make, snakes can move faster or slower. If you want proof, Watch this. Snakes have uh, an undulatory mode in which they slither, and they can change to a different mode in which they fold and extend like an accordion. 
David has discovered that this accordion motion is the slowest of all the snake gates. It also takes the most energy, yeah. and that's because there are points in the motion that the snake actually has to come to a stop. And that's a necessity when you're doing contractile, extensile motions. It's funny, a lot of people think our experiments are actually a little bit silly because they're so simple. But it is intentional that they're simple because we're looking for the simplest possible motions and um, environments uh, so that they can be translated most easily into mathematics. And into engineering. David's colleague J.D. Huggins and his students have been working on robots that use some of the same techniques snakes do to get ahead, with scale-like pads. David's research could help in the development of search and rescue snake bots and also surgical snakes. Snakes may enter your body uh, to perform heart surgery. Um, the other application is, um, you might be familiar with it if you're in your 40s, um, is a colonoscopy. Can you lie on your back for me, please? Where you have exactly the kind of terrain that a snake can move in, very long, flexible tunnel. It would cause a lot less damage as it tunneled its way up through your colon. Imagine that. Okay, well, maybe you don't want to. But David Hugh is all about using the imagination to get into the head and tail of a snake. Sounds fascinating.